Hey guys, I'm excited to bring you today's video, which is sponsored by Voxelab. Now you might be asking yourself, what is Voxelab? Well, it's pretty simple actually. Let's back up for a second. Voxelab is a small company owned by a larger company called Flashforge. Flashforge has been putting out 3D printers for a while, and uh, they're a little more on the expensive side. Voxelab is their more consumer-friendly 3D printer. Now, with that being said, uh, Voxelab was kind enough to send me one of their Aquila X2 3D printers. Now, I've been running the Voxelab Aquila printers for quite some time, um, and I, I love them, you know, compared to ones like the Ender 3 uh the the 3v2 uh just pretty much any of the the other fdm uh printers out there for me voxlab has produced amazing results it's very reasonably priced and this is going to be an unboxing of the voxlab aquila x2 that uh they were kind enough to send me so we'll get started with that uh, first, let's get the tape off there. Now you might notice that I'm wearing gloves and that uh, I'm trying to be really, really careful with opening this up with um, a hobby knife because one, I don't want to damage anything inside, but two, uh, I am wearing the gloves because we are still in a pandemic and we still have places that are, um, you know, not recovering as well from the pandemic or have new variants of the pandemic. Uh, and this... I, I don't know where this has been, you know, uh, they're manufactured in China, but they've been delivered. It's been delivered here from, you know, going to China to some warehouse in the U S and then all of a sudden to my front doorstep. Um, yeah. So let's take a look inside and see what we got. And just like with the unboxing for, uh, the regular, Aquila. Uh, right off the bat, get the power unit stuff to let you know that uh, 115 and 230, depending on where you live, but it should already be selected. So again, tightly packed with foam. And uh, I will say this, the outside of the box had uh, quite a bit of dings and damage and even some torn parts of cardboard. Um, however, uh, the inside looks like it hasn't been touched. I mean, this this is what you see as soon as you open the box and it's just like, oh, oh all this goodness. So, uh, as always, they always send you um, like a trial, a sample size of, of their, their filament. Um, which is transparent red. And uh, you can use this to get your first couple of prints going off the, uh, off the, S the little SD card that they send, it's kind of the, the test prints. Uh, and I will apologize if you guys do hear some thunder or whatever in the background, it just seems that no matter what day I try to wait for to do this video, uh, we seem to have a storm, but hey, that's just where I live. It's always like that uh, Next up is the the user manual um, Now normally I don't I don't see it this time, but normally uh, the user user manual usually comes in um, Some type of like Ziploc bag and it has uh, actual zip ties with it but uh, this time the manual is by itself. There were some upgrades in this version versus uh, the standard. 
in the standard Aquila, um, the screen is uh, horizontal like this, but in on this machine particularly, it is meant to be uh, vertical, actually. So, and if you notice, there's no Foxalab logo, which I'm not sure why they left it off, but they did not put it on there. Another upgrade for this machine compared to the standard one, I guess. Uh, it's not really like a, a, a huge upgrade as far as the machines are concerned uh, because it's still the same print volume. It's still the same basic everything. They just made some minor quality of life improvements uh, like with the screen. They did include on the... Uh, extruder end uh, they did include a filament runout sensor uh, which is very nice to have uh, stock because I can't tell you how many times I personally uh, have been printing and walk away or leave and go to the store and come back and find out that my print has failed because I ran out of filament when I thought I had enough so this uh, and also not to mention that sometimes uh, the extruder itself has been known to break the filament not there specifically but just in general and sometimes I'll get filament that that breaks and so it won't continue to extrude and that'll help with that as well because if it snaps in there it's obviously not going to be um, pushing any more filament towards it so it looks like this is going to be the uh, main part of the unit here i want to be kind of careful taking this out because usually yeah all the this is the hot end so all the the wires and everything are going to be directly under basically under that plate so we want to be kind of careful with that it is it is a glass bed um it looks like it comes with you know everything else that's standard you know power supply uh, or power cord uh, they are still using the meanwhile power supply on this one which is great that's um the preferred power supply and let's see if I can get this out. Uh, if you notice on this, uh, let me move this back. If you notice on this, you'll see something here that says N32. So that's new. Um, they started actually putting, I'm guessing that's the chipset. I'm guessing, I, I don't quote me. <laughs> I'm guessing that's the chipset for this one, but um, I don't remember them putting that on the original. I'm gonna set this down behind me. We'll take a closer look at all that once we get everything unboxed here. Uh, you know, your standard rollers, scraper. These are all the little bits and pieces, the nuts and bolts of everything. Uh, the the flash drive that they give you, the hex wrenches, a uh, spare nozzle, uh, and basically just the nuts, nuts and bolts. And then you have uh, one of the other changes that's made here. Uh, this is their, this will be the top part of the gantry, which uh, now has a handle built in it's a nice looking aesthetic uh i would say that the people who are going to get the most value out of that are people who are constantly having to move their machines from one place to another i personally have had to move my machines a couple of times and rather than just grabbing them you know by the by the gantry and pulling them and carrying them off um that's probably <laughs> a lot better to deal that with a handle 
Okay, so they did include the zip ties. It's not like, you know, they said, hey, we're not going to give you zip ties. Uh, they did actually include them. They're just not in the little Ziploc baggie with the other stuff. Um, you know, these are going to be your little stoppers. Uh, these will be the pieces for tightening the belts, which is another thing we'll talk about. A couple of stepper motors. The actual filament roll. Wow, I can really hear that thunder coming down outside. It's crazy. And then uh, all of the railings and, and brackets. So that's what comes in the box as a whole. Like what the whole entirety of the box is. So I'm gonna set this stuff out. We'll spread it out here on the table and uh, we'll get a good look at, at everything. Capricorn day one. Like don't even, I mean you can put it together but I wouldn't even start my first print with this on there. Also, another thing of note is uh, I, the one in here inside the hot end is probably fine. Um, this, this one in here is probably fine. Um, but the ones that they send you to put on the extruder side, which are these, uh, these are typically not worth it i wouldn't put that on um as i assembled it i i definitely would go ahead and change that to i, I you can find cheap ones um in fact they come in you know bulk packs where you can change out both the the one on the hot end and the one on the extruder uh but day one you're going to want to do that because what happens is uh these tubes get to moving back and forth and those little plastic teeth on those uh, stock pneumatics that they give you uh, don't hold it properly. And about mid print, this pressure builds up and you'll come back and boop, your tube will be off. Um, your tube will be popped out, your filament will be up here and it'll still be running, but it's pushing the filament through where it popped out. So. It, it just causes a lot of problems when it can be a simple upgrade costs like maybe 10 bucks usually to get the whole setup you buy a little capricorn kit change out the the tube and the pneumatics and you should be good to go um so that's really all i can think of that's different if you have questions about the aquila aquila Aquila, Aku, Akuna Matata. If you have any questions about it, um, you can go back and watch uh, the unboxing that I did for the original. Uh, there, Like I said, there isn't much different between the two other than a handle, the, uh, the vertical screen, and the filament runout sensor. So... Uh, but that's it. Like, this is pretty much it unboxed. Uh, I'll get another video up of the actual assembly. And you can always, you know, subscribe and hit the little bell notification. That'll let you know when I'm doing my updates. But I do plan on having a lot of uh, 3D printing content as well as other stuff. But uh, with the way that I've been 3D printing like a madman recently, it's worth it just to see what the heck I'm printing. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's informative. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment down there. Again, I'd like to thank Voxel Lab and FlashForge uh, for sponsoring this video. Uh, Capricorn, not a sponsor, but I do feel that they play an integral role and and what's going on with these 3d printers uh and getting them up and running and getting nice prints your first time out uh so sponsor or not i'm gonna recommend it because it's just good if i believe in the product i will talk about it that's that's all there is to it i'm not being paid uh 
to, to say any of this for Voxelab, Flash Forge, or any of them. Uh, they did send me this printer to review after I already purchased multiple of the original one and have been printing on them nonstop since I owned them. I, I literally only turned the, shut them down to do maintenance on them at this point. But yeah, if you have any other questions, just feel free to reach out. I'm very easy to get a hold of. You can find me on Twitter at uh, Titan Gaming TTV. And, uh, or you could just leave a comment below and I will try to answer all your questions. But that's it. That's the unboxing. Hope you guys enjoyed it.